I wasn't prepared for Jean-Luc Goddard, I doubt that anyone ever was. And now that he's gone it feels impossible to articulate the immensity of his impact on cinema, an art that he changed more than most. His influence was profound, so much so that even after his work fell out of favor and was reflexively dismissed by the lazy, and even as he himself faded, he died by assisted suicide on Tuesday at age 91, vestiges of this vexing giant, the cool guy with the dark sunglasses and cigar, remained. He was a phantom of cinema long before his death, and he will haunt us. When we speak of adored artists, we often flash on the first time we encountered their work, a tendency that evokes first love. I was in college when I saw my first Goddard film, Every Man for Himself, 1980, widely considered a return to form. I can't remember now what I thought of it then. I only remember the sensations that it produced as I reeled from the bleaker street cinema and walked home in a fog, dazed. I thought that I understood movies, but I didn't understand this one. What I also didn't understand is that I had just watched another way of making, and seeing, film. Early on, Hollywood made movies easy for us. It taught us how to understand its sense of time and space, and it turned sights and sounds into stories. It invited us in with a smile and instructed us to enjoy the show, and then come back for more of the same the next week. Goddard didn't make it easy, or not always. He insisted that we come to him, that we navigate the densities of his thought, decipher his epigrams and learn a new language, his.